All right, Raga Ragnas, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Now, you just told me that you're in Iceland and it's nine o'clock at night. Can you just show me the view again? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the midnight sun here. It's, it's August now, so we're not um, experiencing the 24 hour daylight, but it's, we're up in the Arctic. Like very close to the Arctic. <laughs> so I guess the the opposite's true then. It goes pretty much dark at some other point then? Yes. Uh, December, January, it's wow. pretty dark. If you wow. work nine to five and you don't go outside, you you'll you won't see any daylight at all. Like the the really? sun, like the daylight will come up at like eleven and then it will set at two, three. Like so if you're in, in an office between nine to five. In December, January, you're pretty much in need of a vacation somewhere far away. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, what, what do people do then? Like that can't be healthy, right? Um, we supplement with vitamin D and we travel. I think that's. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that keeps us alive, and mm. uh, we are kind of in a in a good place here in Iceland because it's not that hard to go to Europe or the states um, or North North America. And, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of, uh, you know, attractions, you know, people go to, go to Spain during the winter or, you know, to, to some islands off of Spain or something. And, and that's a very popular thing here in Iceland to do, um, during, yeah. during those months. No doubt. That's what, that's what I'd be doing. What yeah. did your, what did your parents do, uh, growing up? Like what, what was their jobs? Uh, my mom was a teacher and now she is a principal or a headmaster of a private school um, mm -hmm. that my son goes to. And my dad was in tech. He, he was in computer. He worked for Hewlett Packard and then he worked for Apple Computers. And oh, wow. now he um, runs his, his company from home. And um, my grandmother started a wool company when I was probably 14. And I started... Oh and now that's kind of like a family business that my father um r runs the business side of it and i do some of the design stuff and since my grandmother passed a few years ago we've kept it alive and i've added some things and it's all icelandic wool so, oh, wool so that's that's incredible we have more more things in common than i thought my dad actually was in wool for 30 years he was a wool salesman in australia mm -hmm. wow yeah crazy hey um, I didn't, I didn't realize, well, I did realize, but, um, it, it's crazy to think the amount of variety of wool there is like the, the types of wool that you can get is just numerous. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, the Icelandic wool is, is, um, different from a lot of other wools and it's really, it has good qualities of, it keeps you warm even the, when it's wet. And it has a couple of layers, like the, the sheeps have a couple of layers to the wool. And it mm. some people find it very scratchy. It's not the softest wool. Mm. It's really, really warm. And we made these um, full suits kind of thing. Really? Uh, yeah. So we lined them with fleece and it's wool on the outside. And some of the rescue team workers that, you know, have to go into extreme conditions, they were wearing those um, full, you know, suits that we made and we custom made it for, for each individual. And I actually used Speedo's Baskin um, <laughs> seams to put on the wool suit because I know like the, you know, the tech technical, you know, aspect of mm. being able to move in the, in the, uh, in the suit. So I actually kind of like, was like, oh, Speedo makes like a seam through the thigh. <laughs> it actually worked. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> And I got my inspiration from my, uh, from my Faskin. <laughs> listen, wherever you can get it. Uh, that, that's super cool. Um, well, listen, you are famous for being an actress. Uh, those that, that may know you and watch, watch the series Vikings like I did. That's, that's what I originally knew you for. But like, obviously digging into your past, you're an Olympic swimmer. And we ended up, we went to the same Olympics. We competed at the same Olympics in 2004. Oh. So I, I wore my shirt for you today. This is my Australian Hi. Olympic. Yeah, so. I have no idea where my stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> I kept fun. one shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't do a lot of, uh, um, you know, memorabilia. Like all my medals, all my mm -hmm. you know, awards, every, I don't, 
I don't have any kind of display of everything. <laughs> and well, I have a podcast, so I have to in a way. Like, it kind of helps the podcast. But my um, grandmother always wanted me to make like a big, you know, shrine of all yeah. the awards and everything. And I was like, yeah. me, I can't. And so I don't even know where my, you know, Olympic label stuff is. But yeah, yeah. 2004 and then 2008. Very cool. And and I was reading even further about 2008. No, it might have been the World Championships in Melbourne in 2007. You went there, right? Yeah. So you actually competed against a girl that I coached in 2007. So, yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. When I read through your bio, I'm like, oh, wow, this is, this is cool. So let, let's talk about swimming then before we get into acting. So how, how did you get into swimming in Iceland? I don't think I would want to jump into water if I was from there. Okay, so here's the thing. Iceland is the best place to swim because we have geothermal heating. Oh. And so we have more pools per capita than any other country in the world. Wow. And in every pool, we have probably like on average five to 10 different hot tubs with different hot mm. heated water. Yes. And all outdoor swimming mm. pool. So we have plenty of hot water. So you know, people thinking I'm from Iceland, knowing that I was swimming, you know, in outdoor pools, they're like, how did mm. you do that? I'm like, well, you know, we have a lot of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was swimming in South Africa and we were heating the pool with with mm. wood put into and, and fire and the the there's a big whirlpool of water around some kind of bucket of fire and it went <laughs> I was like, this is blowing my mind because we have it really, really good here in Iceland. But um, I started when I was six and um, my parents had this rule that um, us, uh, sibling, me and my brother and my sister, we had to pick an instrument to learn and a sport to do. Right. And um, I had some friends in swimming and I just started swimming when I was six and, uh, you know, didn't really come up for air until <laughs> I got pregnant in 2012. Good, good idea. I mean, yeah. uh, um, swimming, swimming's awesome. And yeah. I guess you, you found your love and your passion for it. So when did you first discover you had a talent for it? Um, I was, well, I'm uh, six foot two. That's 188 mm. meters. And mm. I was about 184 centimeters when I was 12. Oh. And I got all really fast so i got really good at swimming around like 12 as well and um i remember just you know probably at at the age of 12 where i just got it i i mm. you know dove in and i was fast and i realized how to be fast like i had been swimming for six years and i knew the strokes and i i was pretty good you know i, I did a lot of tech technical work and, and technique was very important to my coach at the time mm. and then i just realized how to use my height as an advantage and um yeah i think i was about 12 i qualified for the junior national team went to one of the nordic countries probably sweden to swim at a nordic mm. championships like nordic junior and i just kept getting better and better from from then on and and I think yeah that's when I kind of realized that I got it like I knew how to swim fast basically right, right. did you uh, I mean you went to the Olympics at 17 right 2004 you were 17 19 yeah oh well, okay 19 so what did you I mean how did you make that decision that you wanted to kind of continue to swim kind of beyond high school and and take this thing seriously like this was a, like a real deep passion I guess then um yeah it, it's it just came kind of naturally it wasn't like a big pat I was probably seven or eight when I told my dad that I was going to go to the Olympics and I was going to go to the Oscars I probably told both my parents because they were wow. like Oh, sounds great we'll be there mm. and they promised me that they would be there at every olympics that i would go to and every oscars that I would ever go to. <laughs> and they came both to athens and to beijing and they wow. actually were in london as well because they had purchased the tickets i got pregnant um and i was four months pregnant when the olympics in 2012 were so i didn't go oh. but mm. they had already bought their tickets so they they went um and i still haven't gone to the oscars but you know. Come on, what are you doing? Let's go. I mean. um, but yeah, I just, uh, 
it wasn't, it was just kind of natural. It was just what I did. I was good at it. I never thought twice about it to be like, this is my passion. I want to, you know, this is, this is all I'm going to do. I, I did a bunch of other stuff. I was, you know, I was dipping my toes into acting as well. And, and uh, the design, you know, I, I was studying design and stuff, uh, fashion design, and, and I've been using that in my grandmother's wool company a little bit. Um, and yeah, I just kind of um, went with the flow. It was like, you know, why do you swim? I'm like, just because I do it. It's just what I do. It was never yeah. really like, you know, this is me. This is, you know, what I'm going to do. I was just, I just kind of liked it. And there were a couple of times when I came home from practice and I would slam my bag on the floor and, mm. and you know, mom and dad would be like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm done with swimming. And they were like, <laughs> okay, cool. And I was like, can you drive me to practice tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then that never actually like, you know, ended up being a very long um, break. It was only like I just needed food and sleep and, you know, I was ready for the next one. So it just, it was always fun. I always liked the, the whole um, prep aspect of it. It wasn't always just for the next world championships or the next European championships or the next Olympics. I actually enjoyed the whole process of it. And that I think is what made me just keep at it for all these years. Was there ever any thought of like um, going to America on a, on a scholarship to go to school there and swim or anything like that? Like in terms, I don't know what it's like necessarily to, to swim and train in Iceland, especially for that longer period where you're going to Olympics and world champs and back to back and things like that. I, I guess at some point in my mind, I'm thinking, is that enough for you? Like, do you, in order to get to the next level in swimming on maybe on into a final or onto a podium, something like that, did, did that pressure ever come about? It did. And I got a lot of offers for scholarships in the States. And uh, I went to California, not to swim um, in college, but with a mm. college team, actually. And I actually also went to um, Mission Viejo and mm -hmm. swam with Bill Rose for a while when I was in high school. So I wanted to study acting, but none of the schools that um, were offering me scholarships had any acting programs. Mm. And I thought I know how much the academics um, counts for when they when they give you a scholarship and they want you to perform well in school. And I was like, I can't do that in any other um, um, area of studies. So I didn't want to go and study to be, you know, anything else than, you know, the arts that I really wanted to study. So that was kind of the reason why I didn't take any of these um, offers that, mm. you know, looked pretty good on paper, but then I knew a lot of people that were, you know, getting tutors and staying up yeah. late to study because they needed to pass the, you know, classes mm. and everything. And I thought, I just want to swim. So I actually went to, yeah, I went to California and then I also went to South Africa and swam. I went mm. to Germany and swam there. I went to Denmark and swam with the teams there. So I was, um, I was traveling a lot and swimming and swimming with the, you know, the better swimmers um, mm. around basically, and 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 some coaches that I really wanted to work with. But it was, <clears throat> I mean, I always do what I want to do and and what I set out to do. So if I if I make a goal in my mind, I will go there and I will reach it. And I for some reason it was never my goal to be on the podium. I was like, yeah, it'd be nice, but that's I don't see that for myself. I wasn't. I was always just trying to be better than I was before. And um, it's, it may sound strange, but I was never really competing with the other girls. I never felt mm. like I was competing. I mean, sure, during a race, you know, you see somebody beside you and you try to catch up or you're trying to, you know, stay ahead. Mm. But it was never like I need the gold. And um, I think, you know, because I did it, because, you know, be, because I did it, it for for the love of the sport and not for the hunger for the gold is why I kept at it for so long and you know maybe why I um went to all these world championships and all these mm -hmm. you know European championships, Olympics and all those things I just wanted to have fun and I was having fun 
We individualize training in the pool, so why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Biney of Biney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body. Athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. It's interesting, you know, like um, you said to your parents at a very young age, you're going to be an Olympian. What if you had have said to your parents at that same age, I'm going to be an Olympic champion? You know, like, does that oh, change? Oh, 100%. 100%. Because, yeah. Uh, and, and I don't regret it. It's not, it was just for some reason, if it doesn't feel true to say right. it, I don't think I would. Like, I could tell you now, I'm going to you know, go to the next Olympics. It doesn't feel true to say that because I don't think I will. I might, you know, if I feel good in the next, you know, few months and start training like crazy. <laughs> but Well, you're an actress now, right? And one of your goals yeah. is to go to the Oscars. So to, to, in order to get to the Oscars, you got to get nominated maybe. And then and then people you know, win I, them. So it's like... Oh, maybe I'll just hang out and go, you know. <laughs> well, there's those. But what I'm talking about in terms of goal setting, like now as an actress, if you were to say to yourself, oh, look, I'm not competing against the other actresses. I just want to, you know, but like if you actually put a, a, a something on it, like I want to win an Oscar, I mean, nope. is that is that kind of manifestation? Is like, I mean, could you see yourself? now are, are a little bit uh, <laughs> more aggressive. I can tell you that. And I... I mean, I, I don't, I don't um, broadcast it maybe mm. as much as I, I, you know, do afterwards. Like I, I broadcast it after the fact that I was on the show Vikings mm -hmm. that I manifested that I wanted, to, I was going to be on Vikings. It wasn't like, right, yeah. I was I've like, I'm, on Vikings, I'm gonna be a queen and mm. I'm gonna be a shield maiden and fight and be a warrior. And then after it, I could tell everybody that I was manifesting and, and you know, thinking mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. But with uh, with acting, uh, oh, yeah, for sure. I'm a little bit more aggressive now than with the um, the Olympic goals. Mm. I just go and have fun and go to the Olympics and see mm. what it was all about. But I knew that it took a lot of work um, from other areas. So swimming was always just something I did. I loved doing it. Not you know, not every morning practice was was a, a love affair. <laughs> I could say well, that. Yeah, especially with Bill Rose, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit strict. It was it was quite hard. Um, yeah, for a 50 hundred freestyler, I mean that's a, that's a that's a big ask. We we swam. I can't even a lot. Like, <laughs> and I was seeing that I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. I've known some people that have swum for Bill Rose and, and they're, they're distance swimmers. You're a 50, 50 girl, you know, swim, you swim for 25 seconds, you know? That's the thing that happened at 16. That was really good for me. I was doing a lot of distance in the pool at mm. training and that actually helped, you know, maybe, maybe also in the 50, but in the hundred for sure. Yeah. Because, sure. um, you know, a couple of years later when I'm starting to really focus on the sprinting, um, I had that, uh, you know, the whole, you know, time that I was with Bill Rose, I had that, um, you know, as a good foundation for yeah, that endurance. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't a long time. It was, it was in 2001 and nine 11 hit when I was there mm. and I was 16 and I felt okay. it, it was, it was a little bit of a, a strange time to be like fresh off the boat. And a week after I get there, 
you know, the whole country is is basically on lockdown. Nobody can fly in or out. And I was feeling homesick and I was like, oh my gosh, what, what have I done? I'm here. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, swimming, you know, dozens of, of uh, kilometers a day. Like we were, it was, it was nuts. A lot, it was, yeah. It was, it was a good, um, good foundation for, for a lot of things. Cause then, you know, once I was a little bit older and focusing on the sprinting, I got away with swimming a little bit like short, like shorter practices than most right. people, you know, right. focus on strength and, and technique and shaving, you know, split seconds off with, you know, with the best technique with fewer, yeah. you know, fewer breaths, you know, better turn all this, all the things that, you know, you could, you could focus on. And, uh, you know, just get that. Were, were there people that you were modeling off in any way? Like any any female, any women swimmers that you kind of modeled off? Like for me, I'm everybody modeled off kind of Popoff, right? Like every that was the thing, you know, you, you looked at Popoff as the as the man. Was there was there women that you were looking at as kind of models? Um, Dara Torres always was a little bit of a, um, right. you know, girl boss. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. In and, and out of the pool, yeah. In and out of the pool, yeah. I mean, I didn't. I d it again. It may sound a little weird that I say this, but I never had any kind of you know heroes in in the right, pool. Right. I don't really yeah. have any you know of those in my life except for people that I know, like my mother or my grandmother or my sister. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I did. the The reason why I, I mentioned Dara Torres is because she did a resistance stretching program that mm -hmm. I. And I actually really loved it, and I still do it today. Not every day, but you know, I still use the uh, the resistance stretching that she did. I bought yeah. a D, you know, years ago, and I was like, I'll try this. And then, uh, you know, seeing her swim after she took a break for a few years and had a child, and right. came back in her forties and and you know, kicked ass at the Olympics. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, so, and obviously, pop off. There, there were. Uh, there's a there's a push up that we called the pop off because mm. we're seeing him do it on the pool deck. Yeah, where he go, you know, it's 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 yeah. right. And uh, so he was obviously also one of those, uh, you know, ones that you look up to and not just look up to, but you just kind of look at on the pool deck and you go, what is he doing for warm up? I'm going to do the same. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, I, I know, I know all about it. I was the same way. <laughs> like, damn, yeah. whatever he's doing, I want to do that. <laughs> Yeah. You just kind of go a little bit further away so he doesn't notice that you're just mimicking everything. He's <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how it is. Yeah. Um, which Olympics did you enjoy more, uh, Athens or Beijing? It's really hard to say because Athens was special, as you know, when we yeah. were like, the Olympics are home, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, when it was in, in Greece. Um, and it was my first Olympics and it was obviously this, you know, big deal and everything. Uh, and then in Beijing, it was, um, everything was grand. It was, mm. you know, there were, there were volunteers, you know, and, and there were so many of them. Like mm. I wanted to know what time it was. And I asked one of them and like seven of them came up to me yeah, to try yeah. to <laughs> time it. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I think. I, I don't think I could choose. Um, both were so special in their own way. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I had similar experiences. I was an athlete in Athens, and I was a coach in Beijing. And um, I guess as a coach, I, to, I got to experience the Olympics a little bit different. Like, it's not that same pressure. Like, you go there, and you're kind of solely focused on yourself to, as an athlete to kind of, you know, you got to eat and sleep and, you know, get your rest and all that sort of stuff. And but as, as a coach, it's kind of like, well, I can kind of enjoy this a little bit more. So I got to see more in Beijing, but you're right. Like as soon as you get there, there's like people fighting over carrying your bag to your to your bedroom and things yeah. like that. But I had very <laughs> little expectation too in terms of how grand it would be. And it was, it was spectacular. Yeah. And I mean, in Athens, they did a great job um, with the whole thing. But every morning we woke up, there was a neat new uh, plant planted in our front yard in mm. front of our... Um, house like they were still planting trees yeah we were there yeah. and in in beijing it was just so spot like every like those mm. little pathways and the you know everything in the village was just spot on like you, it was 
very zen and very like it felt like it was ready like even yeah. like year a year before it felt like they were just standing there waiting for the athletes to arrive <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah when you're in the village and sitting there as, as a swimmer and and other sports walk in other sports people like who are the people when they walk in you're like oh wow that's cool you know like was there other people like that for you Oh, um, yeah, 100%. Like when you see Usain Bolt sitting, right. eating a, a bowl of pasta, and you can sit like two seats, you know, from him, and you could be like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to sit here. Like, oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are definitely some superstars that, you know, some some of those tennis players and all mm -hmm. the people, you know, you've seen um, just doing their amazing things. I actually really liked um, uh, some some of my friends that, the volleyball girls, um, mm. I think it was a Brazilian team or something. They mm. were walking by and they were all like, Raga, go stand next to them. And so they were in line for food or something. And I just want to stand next to them. They were so tall. And I f <laughs> I've always felt like the tall one. And I was like, okay, the, I feel like I could literally like yeah. disappear here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it is the, freaky like that. The, yeah. the the types of athletes walking around the village, like it's just it feels like a zoo, a human zoo. You know, you got all these different body types and people, and it's just incredible. It's it's, it's amazing to see because everybody's at their, you know, peak yeah. physical yeah. and probably mental, hopefully, yeah. and yeah. everybody's just you know on their game, and it's really fun to see um, see all those like. You know, when when you see the volleyball girls next to the gymnastic girls, and they're you know the height difference is so crazy, and you're just like, wow, this is an amazing athlete, and this is an amazing athlete, and they're standing there, and it's just like, yeah, like you, it's it's almost like a little human zoo of of all yeah. different, um, you know, amazing athletes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a cool experience, isn't it? It's it's yeah. fun. I'd imagine it'd be like walking into an Oscars and just seeing people and like, wow, like. And that's the way it felt to me because like i guess i guess back in the day we didn't have the social media that we have now and the, the devices that we have and the access to the world that's in our hands like back in 2000 2004 was there was certainly less of that so like when you go to the olympics the everybody you've heard of before everybody you've wanted to see the best yeah. of the best are there and it's like holy shit like i'm actually here and these these people are incredible so yeah. i'm actually very happy that there wasn't any social media when I was there. Like, mm. no Snapchat, no, yeah, Instagram, yeah. no, um, I don't know what people are, you know. Yeah. A friend who went to uh, Rio said, oh, it's, I think it was Rio. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's it's really weird with Tinder. And I was like, <laughs> on Tinder, so I don't know. But, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So when you go into the village and you're just... <laughs> sewn or something you're like athletes everywhere oh. i don't know it, it was a very um, you know it was a it was a weird way of picturing the olympics with all the added mm. so yeah and all the gadgets and everything mm. that you know yeah. i don't with me are we old yeah yeah yeah, yeah i think so right the olympic village tinder is like what the hell but um yeah, yeah it's crazy well listen you uh i consider you an expert in both swimming and um, acting, but I have some acting questions. Can I can I, can I bother you with a couple of them? Of course, go for it. All right. So listen, when when the camera is on you, and you have to deliver some lines, and and you're and you're doing them with um, basically your facial features, right? But you know that there are people staring at you, and then you can see all the things that we can't, right? On the other side, there's lights, there's cameras, there's people, and then there's also this expectation of the delivery. I'm sure they're like, you, do you feel judged as you're delivering? And then how do you then get into the character and be able to relax your face to get the right expressions? Do you know what I'm saying with this? Like. A little bit, but I want to put it back onto you and say, how do you feel when you're standing behind the block and there's a camera on you and they're saying your name and there's a there's a performance, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be expected and on lane four is, you know, all these things. And then you have to go and know exactly what you're doing with the with your your um, event you have to get on the, the block, you have to wait for them to, you know, do the whistle and everything. Mm -hmm. and um, there's audiences, you know, in the, on the, um, you know, the pool deck and everything. 
um, how do you feel when, like, is it hard to perform the the stroke, the swimming? Do you get like, you know, is it? A, I so guess this, you can, right? But like what we do as Olympic athletes at that level, and I'm sure at the level that you're at in, in acting as well, once you get to a level, it's it's all about the practice and the work you put in, right? Like everybody's going to come back to that. Yeah. Like I put in the practice, I put in the time. So you're in the pool two hours a, a morning, two hours at night, let's say, and you're doing that 10 times a week. How does that compare then to the acting training that you're doing? So the acting training... Um, it's very similar and I use the um, the discipline from swimming in acting as well because um, you have to know your lines. And um, for me, it comes easily when I'm working. If I mm. haven't had any lines to learn for a year, like that yeah. happened with COVID and mm. then I had some lines and I was like, oh, um, it takes me a little bit longer this time. Mm. But it's the same as, um, as swimming, I think in a way, because if your coach says, okay, today we're going to do a set that we've never done before. We're going to go 20 times 175 fly. And you're yeah. like, I've never done that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've trained up until now and I can, I can, I can go for it. Like we can mm -hmm. do it we can figure it out. And so it's the training of, of having that camera in your face knowing your lines, obviously being prepared and having the discipline to actually do the work and, and uh, knowing all your lines and knowing everything that, you know, your character is going to do and, and be able to react to different actors doing the different things. Because when you're working at home, you might not get an actor to say the line exactly how you picture it. And you're going to picture yourself saying it this way when you come with like, you know, an answer to it. So it's probably more like a team sport. Now, I've never been a team sport, you know, but if mm. you're in soccer, you yeah. don't know where the ball is coming from. It's going to come from here. But you know because you've trained um, that you can take it from any any angle. You can you can yeah. get the ball from any angle and you can score because right. you've trained that, you know, or you're going to try to score and, and you probably will if you're really good at it. Right. Um, so the acting aspect is, you know, you – it doesn't bother me having a camera in my face with my training, with my the schools that I've been to, the classes that I've done, and all the work that I've done, both on Vikings and all the other projects, movies and TV shows and everything that I've worked on, um, is all training. If, mm -hmm. if it gets a camera in my face and says um, your your character is very sad and and you need to cry, it mm. doesn't it doesn't bother me. I can I can zone everybody else out and I could just be in my own lane doing my own stroke and if my character is supposed to cry or smile or you know say you know three pages of dialogue it's just all about the prep and it's the same as you know a, a new set that you've never done but you're like okay 20 times 175 fly it's gonna be it's gonna be hard yeah. but let's go for it you know so three pages mm -hmm. of Blog and uh you know your camera in your face it's a close-up and go and you're like and then you know with the training it comes easily in terms of the dialogue itself like right, there's your lines and then there's the nuance of when to say them and and coming off and in and out of the scene right of of whatever the scene is and and so then does it you need to know the cadence so the delivery of the the, the line that's ahead of you and when that's going to end. So that would that mean you would have to know the whole script? Uh, in a scene, yes. And so if you have one scene that you're like, I wouldn't need to know the whole script if I'm not in the scene. But right, in sure. every scene that I'm in, it's always good to, to know. But I don't really put a lot of focus on other people's lines. I know that they're there so that I can like let them finish saying what they're, you know, supposed to say. But it's not like as an actor and as the character, I'm not supposed to know what the other person's saying. So if I say line A and then the other person says line B, I can't be like waiting for them to say it and be like, oh, I know I knew you were going to say that, you know, and look like I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, I have yeah. to be surprised of what they say. And then the next thing I say is going to have to come, um, you know, as, as my character would reply to the other person. So it's that... It's well, it, you know, in in a lot of good production, you do rehearsals, 
And yeah, sure. sometimes the the directors will be, you know, they're telling you kind of how they wanted fast paced or this or that. Um, so there are rehearsals and you get a lot of takes, but it's, you know, it's always good to kind of like know what's happening with the other characters, but you never know how they're going to deliver a line. You know, right. the line could be, the line could be, I hate you. And you think it's going to come out aggressive. I hate you, but it might just come out smiling. I hate you, you know? So, All right, yeah. so like, um, but I don't or something, you know, whatever your comeback line is, mm. you don't know how it's going to be delivered. And some, sometimes some things even, you know, get, um, you know, just come out on the spot. A, 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 an actor might forget his line and say something else, and you just have to go with it. Oh, you know? really? That happens. That's it interesting. Happens. It happens. Like, I, I, like usually not like forget a whole thing, but sometimes yeah. we'll maybe cut a line, and you right. don't have your setup for the line that you were supposed to do. So maybe you'll have to circle back and try to get the line in there. Mm. Usually, you know, if. If you're way off script, usually a director yeah. will go, hey, cut it, cut it. We're not yep. using that. Dude, stop work. it, stop, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you're going to have to like be able to work with it. So it's kind of like a team sport. You have to kind of have the uh, the training to be able to um, have a back and forth and have it be natural. And, you know, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's all acting is all just, you know, living in an imaginary world, but making it yeah. very. So, I can't remember. Did you have to kill anyone in Vikings? Like you personally? Yeah. You did? <laughs> so I guess the, the sword play was um, important. <laughs> and so like, did you, did, did they teach you, uh, I mean, did, uh, exactly how to hold and swing and stab and kill and all that sort of stuff? Oh yeah. I was, I was training and uh, it was a lot of uh, hours with the stunt um, team learning how to look good with um with the sword and mm. it was really funny because when i first started they the t-rex arms so i mm. would be and they were like you have to you know <laughs> actually look like you are doing something don't with the t-rex <laughs> arms and then we were <laughs> i have a video of this from a rehearsal mm. and so we were doing um i was supposed to kill like 10 guys and i had the whole routine and the whole choreograph you know, fight. Mm. And so I go, <gasps> and I kill everybody. And then afterwards, and even on the video, they're like, Raga, why do you not breathe? Because I killed the 10 guys and it took me <laughs> five seconds. And I was like, <gasps> and they were like, why don't you breathe? I was like, oh, because I'm a swimmer. I'm just <laughs> going <gasps> and then swimming really fast and then coming up for air. So I learned the whole like doing a very physical very hard um thing and actually breathing while doing it <laughs> my technique was to scream every time i would oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. even you know was maybe even good for the uh, for the character because it made me very um you know fierce like fierce yeah ferocious yeah uh, you know a huge ferocious woman coming yeah. at you screaming up the top of her lungs but it worked for me to be able to breathe um you know during my fight scene and not right. be a swimmer and just hold my breath while i did the the physical um you know labor of of killing all these guys so that was but there's a lot of work that goes into the prep and i yeah. am working on a project now where there's been months of stunt training and really yeah are you allowed to tell us what it is or not? No. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> All right. But it's it's exciting, I guess. We could uh we could you know t tell people but not yet. Yeah. Awesome. So, um that's cool. I like that. Well, I I, I mean, I could the, you know, the physical part is is part of the acting that I could get into. So, if you need any um extras or stunt people, let me know, but um <laughs> definitely definitely yeah. <laughs> Tell them about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate it. How did that come about then in terms of the Vikings role? I mean, it was a big role, huge. I mean, you were a star and and a queen. And so, like, that is not a minor role. Like, how did you get that? Uh, manifested. <laughs> I saw the, uh, the I saw the first season or first couple of seasons when my son yeah. was uh, newborn. 
Yeah. And my friend had been telling me about the show and, and I said, okay, I'll watch it now. I have time. You have a newborn. Mm. And um, I started watching it and I was like, that's where I belong. Cause I had been, um, I'd been acting and I'm, right. I'm tall and taller than a lot of uh, male actors. Um, I wasn't getting any of the roles um, that mm. I was going up for. And so I saw Vikings and I was like, that's where I belong. I, right. I'm all, I could be, you know, a queen, a shield maiden. And mm. so I made it a, a goal of mine. I didn't have um, an agent at the time. So mm. I basically clawed my way through to Michael Hurst, the, uh, the writer and the showrunner of Vikings. Uh, through connections of people like I didn't even know, like I would tell anybody, do you know anybody who works on Vikings? Do you know, you know, I was mm. going through um, people in the industry that I knew and I found a connection and made my way and yeah, yeah. self and beautiful. lucky enough to be given an audition, which I nailed obviously. And then I did a screen test with uh, Alexander Ludwig and it was great. He was so supportive and helpful when I did my screen test. And, um, you know, he was like, I think you got this. And, and in the back of my mind, because of the way I set my goals and manifest, I'm like, I know I got this. <laughs> I was like, you think so? You think so? Great. Okay. <laughs> um, so did you see your competition at that stage? Like, did you know who you were up against? I wasn't up against anybody. I just introduced myself oh. and I think there was a character that was about to come up, but I think that after my audition and after my screen test, um, Michael kind of went with, um, yeah. went with it and kind of wrote for me or, you know, not for me, but wrote the character with me in mind. So I don't, there was nobody, you know, I wasn't, maybe there was somebody else going up for it, but I don't, Think is so. the is the is the pressure of like an audition like that like the Olympic pressure where you know you've got one shot like it and like I was watching I was I was watching track and field the other day and the, and these throwers and they had like six chances I'm like damn I wish I had six chances at the Olympics like but like you got one shot is it is it that same type of pressure where you're like man I waited four years for this my family flew out to Athens they're all sitting in the stands you know like I gotta I gotta perform now does it feel like that it doesn't feel like that um always sometimes if you have an audition and you have to get into a room with the casting director or directors or people basically mm. sometimes you know it's it's that one shot and sometimes you'll get a call back and mm. a call back after that or they might say that was great but can you try it this way or you know so sometimes you'll get like a, a second or, or third try but now after covid hit um, most of it is self tapes. So you do a tape at oh. home so you can do 45 tapes and then you can send oh. it up to all your friends and say, pick the best one. And they'll look and they'll be like, oh. like number four. No, I like number 16, I, oh. Oh. but you might send two or three or something. Mm. Um, so you have like a little bit of, um, um, wiggle room there to kind of like no i don't like any of them i'm gonna make it all again i'm gonna change everything and i'm gonna make it better um so yeah it's but it, you know it can be it can be um it can be like that one shot where you get in the room and they're like okay go and you do the, your thing and then they're like thank you bye and you just go, okay great yeah yeah you know hope yeah. they're me um yeah. but yeah i've been in the room like i was up for a really big big part in a big show and uh i had like seven or eight callbacks i was coming back again and again and i had to fly to london every time i did it and then uh for a callback that i did uh, seven people were in the room and usually it was just one or two and i was taken aback and i was um i was sitting there and they they were like oh this is the producer and this is the director and i was like okay they're this is serious. I'm going to book this. I felt like this is it. And this is a very, very, very big show um, that everybody knows. And I was like, okay. And I didn't even know what I was auditioning for. Mm. And I was like, oh yeah, your character is this and this and that. And I put it together, like what show they were talking about. And my jaw almost dropped to the floor. And I was like, this is my shot. And I had done, this was my seventh try. You know, they had seen me, liked me so much that, you know, all these, um, executive producers and directors and everybody was there and i was like this is my shot this is my one shot and then yeah. i didn't book it actually but the 
I think it, the reason is because the show never, um, they never went ahead with that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So it was, it was, you know, it can, it can happen, but yeah, competitive field out there for sure. That's what I mean. Competitive. Yeah. I was going to say like, you know, we go to the Olympics and it's the best of the best. Like when you, when you're on a show like Vikings, you walk into a room and they're all good actors and actresses, right? Like, so like, can you recognize levels when you're acting? Uh, like we can recognize in swimming, like, Oh shit, that guy's good. Like, can you yeah. see that? Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, you know, on Vikings, you know, everybody, everybody can do it really well, but then right. there, you know, a few people that you're working with and you're just like, wow. Yeah. That, that person's got it. Or, yeah. yeah. And, and one of the actors there, a good friend of mine, Peter Franson, every time he played King Harold, every time right. I did with him and it, the camera was on him. One time I was like, mm. I realized oh. he was looking at me and I wasn't supposed to be, you know, <laughs> And I was like, oh, my line is coming up. I better, you know, give uh, him my reaction so that he can. And he was just doing like the most amazing work. And I'm standing yeah. there in the camera going, wow. Like, I just wanted to give him applause. Yeah. 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 That's cool. so for sure. You can definitely tell amazing acting um, yeah. when you're working. I mean, I was working with, you know, I've, I've worked with plenty of, of really, you know, famous good actors. Mm. Um, and I worked with, uh, Anthony Hopkins once. Wow. Um, I was, I was a nobody on, on that project. Like I was just standing there, but he was so, um, professional and so amazing at what he was doing. He forgot a line and everything. And I was like, oh, okay. But it was Could fun. Get, he just yeah. like he swung it and he was fine. And then he introduced himself to me and I was just standing there in awe and be like, I don't deserve you, you know, to be speaking with you, I felt because, you know, he's, he's one of the, you know, best. And, uh, but he was just so nice and so, um, you know, normal. And I was yeah. just there in awe. So yeah, you can definitely tell good acting from, you know, yeah, great. Acting. Yeah, it'd be hard. It'd be hard. It'd be in intimidating, I guess, to walk into a room with Anthony Hopkins and be like, okay, I'm a nobody. And this guy's really good at what he does and now i've got to show him you know he's got to perform you know around me and it's like i guess there'd be there'd be added pressure there so that, it's that'd be tough added pressure knowing who's like if you're auditioning sometimes i'm auditioning and it's for some huge project and yeah it's supposed to be the love interest of so and so and i'm like i'm auditioning to be the, yeah. the girlfriend of yeah. you know that, that guy like what? yeah 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 and, like okay, so I do the audition and maybe it goes well, and I'm like, what if I book it and I actually have to stand there and like <laughs> stand next to you know yeah <laughs> some really famous actor who's who's a big you know you know heartthrob or something yeah. and you like, okay I can't I don't know how to do that. Destro swim towers gain strength in the water with a tower of power. Save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B R E T T, at checkout. DestroMachines.com. Vasa has been the go to training tool outside of the pool for over 30 years. Vasa's products are ideal for developing power and proper technique in your swimmer's catch. Add a few Vasa trainers to your pool deck, and it's like adding an extra lane to your swimming pool. Go to VasaTrainer.com, use code BREAD at checkout, and get 10% off anything from Vasa. What's the name of the actor who played um, Ragnar early on? Uh, Travis Fimmel. Travis. Yeah. yeah Travis. Like, I, I mean, I can recognize an, an attractive woman, right? But they, that was an attractive man. I mean, if you're being honest, that was a good-looking dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I never met him. Eyes, his <laughs> eyes were just piercing. Yeah, I haven't met him yet. I think we're scheduled to be at the same uh, Comic Con conference. Oh, that's, also, that's I, I, weird. You never met him. Yeah, he was off the show when I um, came on. So there's a lot of people on that show that uh, I actually never met. Wow, and isn't that, that's wild, isn't it? But he was great. It he like the presence he had. Yeah. And how he uh, draws the attention in. Yeah is amazing yeah, yeah he he was so good that scene where he where he died and and in, in the snake pit no yeah. man that was 
it's intense. Speaking yeah. of that, like, did you have a choice in how you went on the show? Like, obviously, you, I think everybody knows now you dive into the ocean and, and swim away, which is very fitting for a swimmer. So was that something that you had any say in? Uh, not in that per se, but I had some meetings with Michael and I had this idea that Gunhild would start swimming and, and uh, d uh, killing whales. And I saw mm. this like, huge whale and I want to swim up under the whale and have a knife and stick it in the whale and be able oh, to wow. feed the whole village or something. And um, he was like, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> let's see if we can get you into water. Mm. And then <laughs> subsequently I was thrown into every body of water. Mm. I was jumping from the ship. I was, um, you know, yeah, in swimming somewhere. I was diving to, I don't even know what she was doing at one point. She was diving <laughs> off the boat and then, um, I don't know if it was like shrimp, like fishing, I <laughs> maybe crab fishing. I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, okay, um, can we maybe have uh, the heated water? Because <laughs> it was freezing, yeah. and I was in yeah. in the uh, the Wicklow Harbor for about four hours swimming for that uh, final scene, and uh, the medic on set was, you know, there's you know hypothermia is happening here. She mm. cannot go back in the water, and I look at the director um at the point and and she was like we haven't we don't have it all and i looked at her and i said you get it all now i'm jumping in <laughs> the medic was like no she she can't go i was like i went to the olympics you watch me <laughs> I had like five cameras on me and i was like what do you need now she's like turn around do this that <laughs> so i was frozen it was yeah. absolutely freezing and I got out and I was like, somebody get me a whiskey. <laughs> but I was, well, I don't know if that was the scene they put in, but you looked, you didn't look frozen. You looked majestic. You know, I guess that's what they wanted you to look. So you did a good job acting it. Very carefully. If you go back and look, there is one moment when, in that scene where you can see I'm almost blue and I am shaking. I am, my lips are, you know, quivering. Yeah. I'm pretty, pretty cold. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I'd imagine um, it, it looked the water looked cold at least anyway. But uh, so you're you're from a very small country and uh, with with this history of Vikings, and now you're on this show. Like, so you are you just like super famous in Iceland? Like, is it what's the fame like in Iceland? Is, is there like American type fame in your uh, country? No, I, I I don't think a lot of people here watch the show. We didn't have it what? before it was on Netflix. It wasn't on TV here. They showed one season or two, and then they stopped showing it, which what? I thought was odd because I loved it. So um, people know me here because I was a swimmer. Uh -huh. Like, many people, you know, around my age or older, like the young kids might not know who I am mm. swimming wise. Um Actually, I was swimming at the Icelandic Championships, I think it was last year, just for fun. And I'm sitting there and this kid, like 13 year old, he goes, this area is only for the swimmers. And I go, I know. He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. This area is only for the swimmers. And I was in there and going like, you know, and then his coach went, you don't know who that is? <laughs> who is that? So a lot of people know me from swimming here. Um, some people, yeah, there, there are people who, who love the show here that, um, that know me, but I feel like, you know, I get recognized more when I'm in North America yeah. or, um, even in, in Africa, I was in, uh, Africa shooting and I got stopped way more than oh. I, um, really? I, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah. I, I think I'm more famous in Iceland for being having been a swimmer. Wow, uh, that's super cool. Yeah. Do you um do you did you ever have pressure as an actress to move to America? Like living in Iceland, is that restrictive for you in terms of the type of work you could get? No, actually, there's a lot of things happening in Europe, and my agents really want me to just stay in Europe oh. and. and oh to focus on that i've been um pushing and you know trying to get meetings in the states because 
I mean, I don't know if you can tell. I do have a, a slight Americanized accent. Mm, yes. Um, and uh, the all the American accents are come more easily to me. Like I can mm. go Southern American. Like I could I could do a bunch of American accents. Mm. Um, but for some reason, all the European accents, um, well, I can do them. But you know, it takes a little bit more of work because this is my natural. Um, when yeah. I was English. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've been kind of pushing and trying to uh, make my way to the States a little bit, but my agents are in Europe and they, um, they're really um, want me just be, be here. Cause there's a lot happening in, in Europe and a lot of American shows are shooting in Europe and a lot mm. of American movies are shooting in Europe. And mm. so it's, it's actually a really good place to be, because if I were to get something in the states, I'm kind of you know, in the in the middle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot shooting in in Europe. So that's, that's cool. Do you like that um, that level that you're at? Like that, that you're hovering in that famous level, right? Like, and, and I'm sure there's choices for you in terms of acting and what you do. And and they're like, as a swim coach, I'm thinking, you know, I I could I could coach in high school, I could coach college, or professional like i really enjoyed the olympic level like the highest level of competition i never really wanted to coach 10 year olds like it wasn't for me so it's like is that the same for you in, in acting do you do you think that way um well it's funny because people i've actually been asked why did you stop acting and i'm like i haven't stopped acting i'm still acting like mm. we just don't book jobs all the time right. uh, i'm not at the point where i can just you know pick and choose parts um uh, you know, I've I've been very lucky with a couple of, of projects that I've been doing, and and uh, th this project that I'm working on now is is an amazing project, and I've done some voiceover work, um, mm. or like an animated series and and uh, video games and such, and um, and a couple of things here in Iceland. But for some reason, it's really hard to get into this business here in Iceland, even though I've you know done some stuff abroad. They're not really giving me a chance here like i'm not even getting auditions because it's kind of like uh, are they mental what's wrong with them no um but it's fine you know but i'm i'm auditioning you know every time i get an audition i you know put work into it and and try my best and um i would love to be working more and be mm. on a higher level because yeah, I was on a on a really um, popular show, and I think I did a great job there. A lot of other people think I did a good job there too. But you know, it's still a, a competitive um, market out there, and you know, there's a lot of projects going on, but there's also a lot of good talent out there. So I'm just, you know, hoping for more auditions, hoping for more work, and so I still don't feel like I'm in hovering in any kind of fame area, like mm. that. I, I I sometimes even forget that people might recognize me. So I go out looking like, you know, I, I usually don't have makeup, but you know, I'm a swimmer. We put mm -hmm. our in the yeah. butt, we're wearing yeah. a tracksuit and I, I, that's still me. And so when people come up to me in the street, I'm like, oh yeah, people know me. You want a picture? Okay, hold on. <laughs> right, right. And then you smile for the picture. And I yeah. still feel like, you know, that geeky swimmer that just has like chlorine bun mm -hmm. in the and and you know it's it's a yeah i i don't really feel any kind of like ooh, i'm there you know yeah yeah I get there it's so weird isn't it like i watch you on vikings i'm like oh but that is like a, you know that's so incredible and then the you think of yourself as like i haven't even made it yet you know it's like it's just weird yeah. isn't it you know like how we think that way. i guess i don't feel like i've made it or like not but i just i don't um maybe i just i i don't see myself belonging with um you know the top tier yet uh it's kind of like in swimming like you know on pool deck you're swimming you're going in the lane but for some reason the best swimmers over there the the pop offs and the, right. and the or, you know you're not just going up and being like hey how's it going you know yeah. Swim with me on lane three and warm up. <laughs> you kind of just step back and you're like, we're, we're, oh, excuse me, you know, yeah. Mr. you know. Um, so I, that's kind of like how I feel with the acting too. I don't 
you know, feel like I may, you know, I'm, I'm up there with the best and, and I am not, but you know, I, I'm still working on getting there. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, I think you need a coach. I think you need someone that's with you all day telling you how amazing you are and incredible. And it's like, you know, like, you know, the guy that gets the splits and you know that. And so it's just like, you need a coach in, in, in <laughs> acting to take you all the way, you know, that's what you need. Yeah, I think the, uh, th that's the job of like a manager. I've got great oh, agents oh, that okay. get, and stuff yeah, yeah. i think uh, a good manager maybe would be the the guy with the clock and the splits and yeah, I, it pumps you up yeah looking good there <laughs> <laughs> with this maybe get me yeah. on some carpets or something yeah exactly you need, you need a publicist that believes in you i'm very um i love the the craft of um acting but yeah. i'm not i don't have any like um fame um craving if, if that's a thing like I don't I don't I'm not like you know I don't need all the glitz and glamour um it I'm sure it will be fun when it happens and if it happens yeah. but, um I just love the work yeah uh, book a job I'm just happy to to have a job and be able to go on set and do my thing um and all that you know glamorous lifestyle and the you know red carpet stuff and premieres and all that that's it's never been my kind of goal, um, but I'm sure it will be fun when it happens. Well, I'll tell you this. I, mean, I don't know how many people tell you this. Uh, I'm sure you hear it from fans, but like the body of work you did on that show and and the time you put in is there forever. It's history, but it, it gave me so much pleasure. I'll tell you that. Like I loved watching it. You know, like I would, I would love turning the television on knowing there's a new episode of vikings that's out and then watching you perform i was just i was i loved every second like it gave me so much joy and pleasure in my life to watch you perform so like i don't know how many people tell you that but like the work you've done is outstanding and it's going to live forever so i appreciate Thank it you. you're going to make me cry <laughs> I, mean, I didn't i didn't even know you i just i'm watching you on tv and i'm like man she's incredible you know like business and but people don't tell you that like you're incredible and that you had an impact on them you know and i think that's important to hear that you know yeah, thank you. I've I've heard from some women um, the uh, the episode where I lose the the pregnancy and the child, and mm -hmm. and uh, I've heard from women that it had it gave them um, you know a lot of strength and hope to see like this strong character go through the same thing that a lot of women have gone through um, throughout like history and even mm -hmm. today, and uh, that made me. Like I, I was just very touched to be able to um, give somebody something in in uh, on a show where I, you know, gave it my my all, and uh, I think it, yeah, it's it's a it's a very good like feeling to hear that you've had an impact on people, and and uh, so thank yeah. you, I really yeah. appreciate it because, you know, I I feel like the arts is a very important. Um, medium like any type of art because it gives people um you know a lot of a lot of things um you know whether it's a painting you know and you, you right. sit and it makes you feel something or you're watching you know or reading a book or or listening to a piece of music or watching a film and it's all we're all artists uh coming together to make this you know like that show we everybody came and, and did their best and and I'm just very happy to have been a part of it because it, it yeah. did that for me too. It it really gave me a lot of pleasure to watch the show and then to be a part of it was just it was just amazing. Is it is it difficult to watch yourself on TV? No, actually, I may I thought it might, like would be, but I even asked my mom. I asked, um, "Is it hard to watch me?" And she she said that she had seen some things where she felt like she was watching me. But then she saw Vikings and she was like, I wasn't watching Raga. Like I wasn't watching my daughter. You were mm. good. And that made me feel like oh, wow. even my mom can see through, um, you know, and, and actually forget that it's me kind of. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really good um, testament of like, maybe I did a good job. That's some it. good acting then. If your mom, <laughs> mom believed you were someone else, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really cool. I love it. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and rewatch it all now that I've met you and talked to you and and take even more pleasure in watching it again. So uh, 
I appreciate it. You know, it's just, I, I guess I've always just had this fascination for Vikings. I guess we all have. That's why the show worked, right? But I think what you did, all of you, is you made it believable and real. So, like, you, you took all of us as the audience into that time period and made us feel like we were there, you know, like that really happened. And you were like, the acting was so believable. It's like, it's almost like you're transporting into that moment. So like, that's when you know you, you're doing something good, you know? Well, thank you. I mean, I appreciate that. That I, I agree. I mean, I, that's how I felt when I was watching the show, but you yeah. know, hearing somebody say that also about my work, it's, it's uh yeah. Big time. I appreciate it. Well, Raga, thanks. Thanks for doing this. Um, again, nice to meet you and I appreciate you taking the time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, stay, stay around. I want to chat with you for a sec. Thanks. Event, heat, lane, name of swimmer, times and places. It's called Swim Nerd Live and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart TV, phone or other device. There are so many things you can do with this software. A very simple and easy to use necessity for any team or facility that is live streaming their meets results. One click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time. Go to swimpractice.com to learn more.